Hi everyone, it's my absolute pleasure to be here and to be talking to you about the Gecko survey, um, updating you on all the fun stuff that's been happening. Uh, so, before I jump right back in, I'm just going to ask a quick question to the audience. Uh, how is the Milky Way formed and is it a weirdo? Now, I'm not expecting an answer from you all right now, but I do, and actually that is two questions, but I do expect that at least one of those questions is of interest to most people in this room right now. Now, we've got a couple of ways of attacking these questions. The first part is that how is the Milky Way formed? We've been making great projects with galactic progress with galactic surveys. That's galactic with a capital G. Uh, so Galar, Apogee, Gaia, so many stars these days, all with kinematics and chemistry. So we really have a great um, picture now of the Milky Way and the individual structures within them, both chemical and kinematic structures. The only downside to studying the Milky Way is that the sample size is one, okay? So the second part of the question, is the Milky Way a weirdo? We really need to turn to extra galactic surveys of Milky Way analogues or something like that. Plenty, again, plenty of number statistics there. Um, but even with the most recent generation of IFS surveys, we really don't have the resolution to be able to differentiate between especially faint galactic structures. So I'm talking thick, thin disks, these sorts of things. Um, and I'm not even going to open that other can of worms. So what do we need to move forward? Okay, how are we going to make progress on these sort of questions? So in my opinion, what we need is more detailed studies of many Milky Way type galaxies. And if we can go really deep, that'd be great too. Now, ideally, these galaxies are going to be edge on. Um, so we can separate the vertical and the radial distributions of the stars and the gas. Now, isn't that convenient? Because that is exactly what the Gecko survey is. So, uh, a bit more, what is Geckos? We are an ESO VLT large program. Uh, we were awarded 308 hours of muse time to observe 35 Milky Way massed edge on galaxies and we're going super duper deep. Um, we have a range of morphologies. Some have bulges, some don't. About half of them have these boxy peanut bulges, these X-shaped things, which are the edge on projection of a buckled bar. And also, very importantly, we have a range of star formation rates. We've got a super main sequence, a main sequence, and a sub main sequence sample. All can be seen in our beautiful family portrait arranged by star formation rate. Uh, now, a range of star formation rates at a similar mass probably means a range of assembly histories. So we're really pr probing the whole spectrum of disk galaxy assembly histories of Milky Way mass. Okay, so how do you get a Milky Way mass galaxy? How many different ways are there that you can get a Milky Way mass galaxy? Um, so, three main science goals for geckos. First of all, what is the history and the impact of external processes on disk galaxy evolution? So I'm talking mergers and gas accretion. Then also we're curious about the internal processes that shape our disk galaxies. So this is the role of outflows. We've heard plenty about that already today. Um, clumps and things like that, and uh, roles of the role of bars and bulges and things like that as well in shaping disks. Um, our third science goal comes from the galactic side. So we have all of these fantastic chemokinematic models of Milky Way galaxy formation and evolution. Can we take these models and apply them to external galaxies? And um, that's going to tell us two things. First of all, can we use the Milky Way as a template for disk galaxy evolution? And secondly, um, well, can we use it? Right, yes. And then uh, what is the predictive power of these models? Okay, so do we actually know how the Milky Way has formed? Can we constrain these models? Um, so this is the Gecko Steering Committee. You already saw this picture today. And this is everybody in the Gecko's team. Uh, there's over 40 of us now, which is super exciting. And everybody that has uh, a name in purple is an Astro 3D member. So that's over half of us now these days. Uh, these are the hats that the Steering Committee wears. Uh, our benevolent and esteemed leader, Yester van der Sund, is the PI. I'm the deputy. We've got Michael Hayden over there as the Milky Way Modeling Coordinator, or the Galactic Overlord, as I prefer to call him. Marie Martig is our Science Coordinator, and then Deanne Fisher is our Multi-Wavelength Coordinator, handling all of those invisible wavelengths that scare me. Now, what is the status of our survey? So, we have some data. Uh, 71 of our OBs have been observed already. Um, and we're one and a half semesters in out of four, which is very exciting. We are neck deep in data reduction and data analysis pipeline development at the moment. Um, I wish I could say that this was the Gecko's data reduction team, but there's not a thousand of us, unfortunately. 
Uh, it's mostly just three monkeys at the moment, and instead of typewriters, uh, we're bashing MacBooks. So, uh, some of our galaxies, however, are completed, which is super exciting. Uh, we're doing lots of QC, all of that fun little stuff. But in my totally unbiased opinion, this is like the best IFS data I've ever seen. And so for the rest of this talk, I just get to show you pretty pictures. Nothing better than that. Uh, there's a galaxy missing. <laughs> well, <laughs> I'll just show you, I'll just show you one. That's incredibly strange. Okay, you'll have to come see me for the full picture. Oh, well, that's all right. In my opinion, the bottom one was more interesting anyway. Um, here's a Jekyll's image of PGC 44931. Um, fine. I'm going to overlay, yep, still not there. Okay. I'm going to overlay the Muse cubes uh, of these images, reconstructed three color images of the Muse cubes. Okay. Um, the top one, yeah, was meant to be ESO 120, ESO 16 as well. The most exciting thing about this is that you, the Muse cubes are deeper than the Dachau's imaging. You can see extra stuff. So, and every single one of those pixels is actually a spaxel and has a spectrum associated with it. So that's just an idea of the enormity of the data that we have coming in and the beauty of it. So now some derived data products. These are the stellar kinematics. Uh, so the stellar velocity, um, first, uh, the top one is just a plain old disk galaxy. The bottom one had a boxy peanut bulge, like I was saying earlier. So the projection, uh, outwards projection of a buckled bar. So the really cool thing about the bottom galaxy, PGC, is that weird, oh, I've got a laser that weird feature here, at the very center here. Uh, this is the kinematic signature of a nuclear disk, which is super exciting that we can see that. Um, we expect it, that's great. We expect bars to funnel gas into the central regions of galaxies, creating these nuclear disks, which form stars as well. But it's just very exciting that we saw it, because we were a little bit worried that the dust might be obscuring these sorts of fun features. Also, we've got the stellar velocity dispersion. Uh, the top one looks fairly normal. Those stripy things there are caused by the dust lanes. Uh, dust is going to be a problem. It's an edge-on galaxy. But there's a fun feature in PGC. Uh, this little feature in the center, which we've been referring to as the croissant, uh, just here. What that looks like and what I think it is, is a region uh, of low velocity dispersion caused by this very dynamically cold nuclear disk rotating nicely, and then some less dynamically cold stuff around it. Um, that's going to be really exciting to explore. So I'm really looking forward to that. Moving on to the gas. There we go. Uh, Deanne actually already showed that top picture today. That's the H-alpha map of ESO 120. Lots of cool stuff, outflows, all things happening there. The interesting one is the bottom one, this PGC one. There's no real outflows, at least that I can see. I'm no expert. Even though the star formation rates of these galaxies are similar and they're the same mass. So I don't know what's going on there. The other thing I'll point out is that you can see the individual H2 regions here. That's pretty cool, right? Um, you could count them. I haven't, but you could, right? As someone who spent their whole career looking at IFS survey data, which is blobology at best, it's super exciting to see these individual H2 regions. Okay. And I will also note that FANGS no longer ha corners the market on IFS studies of H2 regions, okay? Well, our data is just as good. Now, in my last couple of minutes, I'm going to go into some more derived properties. So these are preliminary results. Please don't tweet them, because uh, we're not certain that they are correct yet. <laughs> but always fun to show them amongst friends, right? Um, this is the a stellar age, so light-weighted, um, full-spectrum fit of these two galaxies. Uh, now, if you close your eyes and s or squint at least, it looks like your average IFS map, I think, of stellar age, old stuff in the center, Young stuff in the outskirts, which is looking pretty good. Uh, I'll move on to the metallicity. Uh, similar again, central regions look to be fairly metal rich. Uh, the outer regions, which we expect this to be the uh, thick disk, at least in this galaxy here, seem to be a bit more metal poor, which is in line with what we'd expect if you build a thick disk via mergers or something like that of smaller galaxies. So that's cool. Um, now, the projector is terrible, but I promise you, I could actually make out the boxy peanut bulge in the metallicity map earlier today on my screen. So that's also very, very exciting. I'm looking forward to studying that. Finally, and possibly the most contentious map up here is our alpha enhancement map, so MG on FE. This one here is super cool. The thin disk here seems to be alpha poor, and then you have an alpha enriched thick disk, like the Milky Way has, so that's exciting. And then if you really want to squint, you might just be able to convince yourself that there's a bit of flaring 
of this thin disk in the outskirts. And I'm told by the galactic cr crowd, that's exactly what we see in the Milky Way. So if true, good stuff. Um, lots of implications. <laughs> uh, I'm out of time, so I just put up uh, as my summary slide, every single one of the maps we have so far. <laughs> um, and if you're interested in joining, please speak to us. Deanna and myself are here this week, or you can speak to anyone in the steering committee. Um, and I'll leave it there. Thank you. Thank you.